everyone's had skeletons in the closet, mate, that they think they've dealt with. And they're the things that are holding you back, mate. They're the things that are, that are that, you know, that are um, holding you from going forward. They'll come back, mate. If you, you know, you keep pushing them away. Welcome to the Things You Can't Unhear podcast. I'm your host, Maritza Barone. In this show, I will introduce you to ideas, concepts, and mindsets that will open your mind to a new world of well-being and personal life growth. Through eye-opening interviews, we elevate people in the world doing amazing things for humanity and share insights that will shift you to become the happiest, healthiest, kindest, and most compassionate version of you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Things You Can't Unhear. And I'm very glad you did today because we have a truly unique individual on the show. He's someone that once you meet, you simply never forget. The first time I ever heard him speak, I was completely captivated by his energy and I know you will be too. Today, I introduce to the show, the fear hunter, Mark Kluwer, who is going to share his story of living from the heart versus the head, allowing men to open up completely to show authenticity and emotion without judgment and how we can be the masters of our own fear to take the driver's seat of our lives. Mark has been passionate about health and well-being his whole life and one day decided last minute to attend a Wim Hof retreat back in 2016, which changed the trajectory of his life. The messages and lessons that were shared at that retreat were of strength, health and happiness, and they lit an undimmable fire in Mark. And now he's on a mission to do the same for others. Hello, Mark. Hey, that's bloody good, mate. Where'd you get that? You won't make that up, mate, did you? It's your story, not mine. I'm, I'm so excited to share your energy here today. Thank you for bringing it full pelt for us. Bloody oh, thank you for inviting me, mate. Fully in, hey? Yeah, bloody fully in. <laughs> the only fully in, mate. How's, uh, how's life been for you over the past few months? It's been yeah, tricky it's, for a lot of us, I'm sure. It has, it's, it has been try, trying, of course. Um, always sitting there and... Uh, been hard actually I, I think because the last our last uh, session we had was was on the 15th of March and that's where I, I met you met you and and uh, I haven't really done anything since and it's been um, whether have you it's harder because because you don't practice this stuff it's because it's, it just comes out it's, it has been times there's been times where I think what am I doing and questioning always questioning and um and so yeah it's been difficult but it's like for everyone it's just that's real that's life and i think it's it's about not sitting up there and always being in control because that's not that's not it either we're not always sitting up there in control everyone's human right and we have these times where we need to just believe deep within in ourselves and get out that negative thought patterns you know and and believe the you are on the right path. You know, I've been working up here. I had a building company um, um, for 25 years with my brother. I, I, I'm originally a plumber and I've been working up here and I have, there are times where I thought, well, that two years or, or no, it's actually since 2016 how my life changed. Well, I'm working up here and I've kind of gone back to pre-2016 because I've been working on, on the property up here on this retreat space. Uh, we're building and some of the old habits have come back in mate. Mm, interesting. You know what I mean? isn't it? Interesting. And because I'm doing that all the time and I've got to make sure that that's not me and kind of check in and say, hang on a minute. That's, that was my old self. Yeah. Well, I want to take people on, on the journey from the beginning. So you mean, you mentioned just before we, we, met at, a, at the Hello There event um, mm. that focuses around mental well-being. And that was the very last day that we were allowed to attend events before COVID caused all the shutdowns okay. and the cancellations of events all around the country mm. and all over mm. the world. Yeah. And, um, and like I said earlier, when you walked on that stage the first time I met you, 
you had my full attention for a number of reasons um, because at the risk of generalizing, number one, you were the manliest of men I had ever seen before at these type of events, which are most commonly attended to by females. Okay. And two, because I feel so passionately about men being able to share their voices openly in this space. There's so many emotional expectations that society hold for men. Tell us what that means to you and how it affects you in your heart when you think about how men are sort of held back by what society expects. I think what's, I don't know if I'm going to ask this question properly, but I think I'm going to. I'm going to give this a crack, mate, right? What's happened in life with men? And a good mate of mine, Trevor Hendy, or we were having a, after one um, event we did together, um, and Trevor Hendy, we were, actually we were laying on the beach, head in the sand, and we were just relaxing after the session. It was, and it, it was a workshop in, in Perth for um, a mining company. And, he, and, he, and he, he sat up, or he put his head up and he said, Mark, and Kane, Kane Johnson, my other mate was there. And we were running these things together, these men's retreats, yeah. And he said, I've got it. I said, yeah. He said, well, men have put all their chips on black. Right? They've put all their chips on black because this is how a man has to behave. And if he does this, then the chips are on black. And if he, if he, if he does this, <clears throat> he's going to work hard. He's going to go to the gym, going to do all these things. He's going to have all these trappings. And he's still going to be stoic. And if he does that, he will be successful and happy. It's not right, mate. It's not the case. It's not the case. Because I was there at that point. And I thought when. So when he said that, I went fuck. And that was just a you know another light bulb. When I look back now, from now, and I look back on my life, and I'm joining the dots of you know of, of and, and I look back for my life as a. Uh, it's not, not as any uh, um, um, regrets, but the dots of where I am sitting here now. And I see all that, and that's what, exactly what it was about. You put all the chips on black, you're going to be happy, you know? And, and, and men, <coughs> the, 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 the part of that is for men to, and the stoic side, yes, we've got to be stoic, we've got to be both, but there are times you know, in business where you can't, you know, tear up in a meeting or, or on site with the boys. You know, you've got to get this right as a leader. But then there are times where we need to open the heart. We need to open the heart and show them how we feel. Because when you do that, when you open up, you then give, you give permission for others to feel the same, you know. And that's when you're as a group together, and men and women, when you're grouped together, and you're truly vulnerable. I know that word's been used a lot, but when you're truly vulnerable, that's when you actually connect, mate. And that's when true connection happens. Oh, I hear you. I can imagine on the construction industry, this doesn't tend to happen very often, does it? No. As I said, you know, it's all this kind of bravado shit. So excuse me, I might swear a bit, but, but um, all this bravado stuff that happens that they don't want to let them, you know, they don't want to come and ask. They just go ahead and do it. They don't think that there's all this kind of stuff that this, these false layers that have been put on, you know, because to be honest with you also on a building site, it's like, it's such a, a wide range of people on a building site. You've got people that can't read, serious, that can't read or write or they struggle with that. That's, and there's, that's fine. You have people that have uh, had a university degree that is uh, uh, no more. You've got this, a whole wide range of, of, of these people that can, there are, which you can learn. You'll learn bits and pieces off every person. But what we need to do is be able to show who we truly are inside. What happens when you do that, Mark? What happens when you are the first one to show that openness to that group from your experience? What happens? Oh, it's, it's, it's like a, it's like a, you know, you step in this point, and it's like open the door, mate, and then all of a sudden you have another like fellow uh, wants to talk to you. And but for years I've had this thing where I'm standing on the site, and 
I've spoken to this bloke for you know um, for for five or ten minutes, and he and he starts telling me about his life and what's going on, and not, and not uh, he's not upset, but it's just a conversation you have, or at, at a gym or whatever. And I've always thought that there's something there that I um and and that that's I, I love connecting with people. I, I just it's excitement. It's getting excitement back because the thing is, once we do this and we let go. There's this, there's this weight that lifts off you, mate. You know what I mean? Because see, and there's people walking around. And they're not ex- we have to be excited, mate, about life, right? And be enthusiastic. But well, there's something that's holding us back. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, it's like the, you know, like a parachute that's on. Cut the fucking cord and go, mate. There's that masculine energy that is so strong. Um, do you think that men need to bring in more of that feminine energy into their lives to find more happiness and, and peace and clarity? Yes, yeah, so, look, for sure. I mean, there's got to be, you know, um, there's got to be uh, masculine and feminine energy. I mean, the feminine side, we need the feminine side, mate, because it gives us balance. Like, it's so important, you know, because look at the masculine, too masculine. You get blokes like Donald Trump, mate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've got to have balance. You've got to have balance in life. You know? So, you know, like, and, and, um, and there are days where, as I said, it's not always beautiful every day. Yeah, but if you can kind of just, you have the chance to, 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 to tell your mates, you love them, mate. It's what you have to do. Give them a hug, mate. And, and let it, like, we had a, I had a session up here in late Feb. I had 30 blokes here locally around the area up in Castle Main and, and Dallas. We had 30 and we, we, we did the, um, did the session that you were saying that what you, what you were a part of. And, um, and I, like after it, there's, there's some tough, like, you know, farmers, like they're tough blokes and they were just letting go. And, well, you know what's beautiful? We had, we had these younger blokes there, you know, younger fellas there that were 20, early 20s, 24, 25. And then we had the older, there was this generation there. And they, and they were letting go and they were just telling them about their, the pressures they felt. And um, it was beautiful, mate. And the, and the connection after it, like, you know. A lot of us, most of us have these repressed stories, experiences, feelings that we don't bring to the surface. Mm. And it's bloody powerful when you do. I mean, it hurts like hell when you bring them up. But once you're through it, isn't it just coming out the other end like yeah, never yeah. before? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it, like, and Gives me goosebumps. Yeah, it does, yeah, well, <laughs> see, in 2016, when I retreated, uh, sorry, I attended that Wim Hof retreat, I, and I was speaking to another friend the other day, you know, and um, I said that I, I, um, we were, we're leaving Melbourne as a group from Fifth Element Wellness and Dave O'Brien was with me, you know, on that day. Yeah. We were, yeah. And we're all going down together. Um, there was about four of us and there was an instructor be, staying behind and I walked past him and he said to me, well, we both kind of looked at each other. He said, I think something's going to happen, Mark. That's what he said to me. And I said, yeah, I'll feel it too, Ant. That's why I'm nervous. I don't want to go. I don't need to change, mate. What do I want to fucking go for? You know? <laughs> and I was nervous. So, you know, and then, and, and, and then, you know, we, uh, we arrived there and uh, Wim turned up and you said it earlier in the introduction and he said, you know, strength, happiness and health, the rest is bullshit. And he, when he said that, it was like, Yes, you know, it really lit, lit a fire deep within that oh, I'd never felt any anything like that. You know, it was like, and so I was all in then because before then I was kind of I shouldn't I, I I've never done anything like this before, and I felt as I said I was really uh, um, um, uncomfortable, uncomfortable about being uncomfortable, and you want to be uncomfortable. Hang on, you want to get comfortable with being uncomfortable if you can. Way out of your comfort zone. Oh, yeah, mate. 
you know, and um, and there's all the, 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 and there was a lot of athletes there. There's a lot of, the, you know, I was um, there's a few people older than me, but it was predominantly they were they were younger, probably in their thirties, probably thirties to forties, and then there was a few of us, you know, um, young fifty year olds, mate, and then there was some even a couple of older uh, couples. But um, I remember on that first that, that we sat down after or the next morning to start, we were sitting up and he was explaining the, the technique and we are talking about it. And then he laid us down. We just started the breathing. And um, just kept breathing, you know, you know, in through the nose, fully in and let go. And just surrender and just keep breathing. And, and you know, it took a while f- Took a while, you know, 10, 15 minutes for me not to be affected by who was around, what's going on here, you know, like, and then I just truly surrendered. And then I had this waves of emotion come up. And it was just like, and I thought, when he said that earlier on the night before, you know, about um, strength, health, and happiness, I thought, that's it. And I came back to that. I thought, I'm just going to give this 100%, mate. And I just, let, lent into it lent, and, and lent into the uncomfortableness and just kept breathing. And then the, this a tide of emotion came up through me and I thought, what? Because I didn't, you know, I had, we have had, everyone's had skeletons in the closet, mate, that they think they've dealt with. And they're the things that are holding you back, mate. They're the things that are, that are that, you know, that are um, holding you from going forward. They'll come back, mate. If you, you know, you keep pushing them away. And um, all this came through. Out and it was just this big, and then I was out and and mate for six day or five days, I was a mess, mate. And I remember this um, beautiful um, Dutch woman and her her husband. Now, and my father's Dutch also, so and I felt there's a connection there. But I remember um, she saw me and I was slumped, laying down like this, and she came up behind and just held me because I, I had nothing left, mate. And it was just all pouring out. And I was worn out, I was buggered. But I, there was this so, after that five days, there was such a feeling of peace inside. You know, um, it was so, just, I just felt, this is it, mate. And, the cha- and then it, changed my, it has changed my life in the end. All these people in there, they embraced. And we need, and this is the thing, because you, with men think that they're going to show their emotion, they they look, they're they're, they're um, regarded as weak. No, because there's people there that that you need to help them. Because once it gives, like I said earlier, it gives permission, then to to let go also, and they truly know. And they come up, and it's just this connect, true connection. And and this is the thing: if you think you're going to lose it, look. If your mates are going to go because you sh- you're telling me you love them, well, they're not your mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, right. And the connection and the connections I've made around you know around Australia after this is phenomenal. And I still, at four years ago, they've become my closest friends. Mm. It's it's just it's just. I'm I'm listening to you, and I know exactly how you felt uh, because you did that to me at this <laughs> hello there event, and. You got on stage and you started with this breathing and this visualization. And do you remember what happened to me? I don't know if you remember, but I, I was an absolute blubbering mess. I was crying like a newborn baby uncontrollably in a room full of 60, 70 people had no qualms about it at all. I just was out of my body, out of control crying. And I was not expecting it. I was not prepared for it. I, I was emotionally physically, mentally drained, probably for a good few days afterwards. Um, yeah, but, that's what happens. Yeah, the drain, yeah, the drain. Yeah, but, yeah. but there was definitely a frigging massive release of mm-hmm. energy and stored emotions. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how you did it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you did, but you supported me and so, so beautifully afterwards. And, um, you know, the, the community there that day was so beautiful and powerful and, 
connected that it got us through those feelings. And yeah, if I, if I had have known that that was going to happen, I probably wouldn't have turned up because yes, that's what that's right. That's what happens. Yeah. I would have been scared. I would have been absolutely petrified. But I, I I I can completely resonate with your story because I saw firsthand how it had affected me personally. What was what was your life like? in the lead up to attending this event, this retreat that changed your life. Were, okay. you, yeah. Yeah, were, were you very um, unhappy? Did you, did you know how you felt? Were you just questioning life a bit? Yeah, I was quite, I, I was uninspired, Maritza. Mm-hmm. I, as I said, I had the chips on black, mate, right? They're there and I'm a building company. Um, I'm, I'm uninspired, um, training at the gym. And, and, and not feeling, just doing. Mm, reacting. You know? Yeah, just reacting, mate. You know, and then, and, and like even with work, I was just just going through the motions, you know. And like, I remember on a Sunday afternoon, I'd think, oh, I've got to go to work the next, you know. You know the, the, and and I, I was like the director of the company, the owner of the company, my brother, you know. But I just didn't, it had gone, it had left. But, but there was a shell there, really. And this is what happens. Men just think they have to keep doing this, but there is no, there, there is nothing else. There is. And so that was for me, you know, um, I was ha- happily married with my wife and, and my, um, my daughters. Like that's always been, you know, great, but I, I, I would, uh, wouldn't show emotion as much as, I, I, I think I still had something there before, you know, like, um, but, You'd probably yeah. closed it off. Yeah, closed it off, mate. Exactly. Closed it off, got to be stoic, you know, all this kind of stuff. And and so I was uninspired, just going through the motions. Um, and then this, I had the opportunity at the last minute of the said to go to this uh, this event. And that, w- that was uh, the calling. On, on, and it's, see, and it's hard. This is what I try to explain to blokes. They, I want them to just come to a session and just do some breathing because what happens, men, inside, and there's a great book um, by Steve Bidoof, The New Manhood, and it talks about, you know, men, you know, and um, a lot of them, any of the issues they bring up, it's a relationship with their, with their fathers, you know, um, and they're like scared. And I'm not, I'm not saying being derogatory, okay? But they've got scared. They're scared inside. They're men, but they're they're scared inside that they, and they don't want to change. They don't, and, and this, and so they, I'm trying to show them that they can come and feel, and feel safe. You know, we have a joke. We'll hug, and I'll say, yeah, right. You've you, you've had your hug, mate, or or whatever, or so. But that it, like. Because even us talking like this now, it's going to scare blokes off, mate. I'm telling you, right? Not not all of them, but it will. So, you know, it's slow. It's got to be slowly. You come in and you, you have a, a talk, and if they can just sit down and talk with you, you know, they might have a release when they have the breathing the first time because they're holding back on stuff. Then, but it needs to take, you know, a number. It might might take three or four times. It's when you're ready, and I was ready. You were ready, Maritza. You know, but it's just getting them in the space so they can feel something different than what they've been doing. You know, um, that they, they, you know, going going to going to the pub or whatever with the with the boys. Tell the boys, let's go and have a breathing session. How good would that be? And jump in the ice bath or whatever, or talk. You know, because that's where it, it's it's a connection point that makes us stronger. And together, when we're together, that's when there's power. Community, mate. I've got, I friggin' love talking to you. I've got so many questions. I, I want to know what happened after that retreat. What happened when you left and you came back home? Okay. You were feeling uninspired before you went. You got there. You had this massive awakening. And then what happened when you came back home? Because things started to change, didn't they? Yeah, they did. I I remember driving back home, and I, he's a good young bloke. Was in with with in my car, and I had my Ray Bans on. 
driving home, not to look cool, but because I was tearing. And I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, he saw me cry all weekend, but it was just this kind of thing I thought I did, you know, and I got home and I, I walked in the door and I sat down at the, the, uh, on the on the dining table and and it was just pouring out. And Julie, my wife, was there and she, she uh, didn't know what happened. And I remember Julie rang up my brother, um, who's my business partner um, at the time, and uh, she said, something's happened to Mark. Something's happened, you know. Um, and he said, oh, look, he'll be right. I've been on these kind of things before. You'll be right after a couple of weeks. Well, I wasn't, mate. And there was just this, and it was great. My brother had really was really supportive. Paul was really supportive. And he said, you just got to watch it now because you're totally open. You know, like you're open. You've opened right up, mate. And it's like, you still need to, because you come back, because as we know, when you come back into society, when you, you're weighing a cocoon like that, is that you come back and people are going to want to put you because they're not feeling happy or they're having trouble. They don't want to see you happy. And it's just, and it's not, it's just the way life is, you know, and, and, and so and it's not all people, right. But, but, um, but he said, you just got to watch that, you know? And, and so. A lot I, of people feel uncomfortable with it too. Uh, yeah, that'd be yeah, exactly. Cause it's like, it's mirroring them. Usually what happens when you have a, a problem with someone, it's you, it's always well, it's because you can see that the issue that you, you've got, you know, and it's, it's mirroring you, you know. So I came back and, but I tell you what, mate, right? I've just got to segue a bit, go back. On the Saturday, I said to a mate of mine, Geordie, I said, Geordie, I'm going to, I'm going to open a retreat space, mate. That's what hit me after all that shit had gone. That's what I wanted to do. And that got me that excited. And that's, has been always what we wanted to do, what I wanted to do, you know, and it came and, and so I had this and I said, Julie, that's, and after all the tears, I said, Julie, I know what I've got to do, mate. I have to keep doing this, you know? And, and so, um, so what happened? Um, the, the weeks just after it was kind of, I had a lot of contact with the people, that went to the retreat was great. So I was never, had never been on Facebook or Instagram or anything, mate. It was just all new, <laughs> you know, but I needed to keep connection because we had this, this community. I felt that I wanted to keep, you know, keep in connection with. And so um, <clears throat> I, that kept coming up and then I went back working and, um, and doing that. But there, I was, um, I was, I was quite, so I was happy. I was happy because I'd found something and I just knew I had to just keep, working for the moment until we found something, you know, and then, and then, but I did put my family through grief, you know, of course, because then what was I was doing, I was having these ice, bar, ice bars at our place. So I'd all of a sudden I said, Julie, Julie's a ripper, mate. I'd say 30 people are coming over for an ice bath. <laughs> Julie's she a doing, legend. Yeah, she's a, Julie's a legend, mate. <laughs> no, she's gone. But, um, Anyway, and, and I said, we're going to have 20, people, 20 to 30 people over having an ice bath. And I, we, we had a spa out the front of the driveway, hired a spa, and we had this big uh, meal after it. Breathing was bloody great. And so it really, that's what started. And it was like getting this thing to keep, you know, happening. And, and then I said to, because for years we, were, we wanted to sell our house and the fear was, there was fear there about oh, the what ifs, you know, and um, I, we had it on the market a couple of years earlier. Um, and then, um, and the fear took over and we took it off, bang. And, but this final time, like after going there and then, you know, we had a men's group um, that I, every Thursday, great it was, you know, we, 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 would, we would talk, there's probably eight of us, sometimes 10. And we, we just used to help each other out. It was great just talking about stuff and then, that the fella said one night, what's the worst that can happen, Mark? What's the worst, you know? And um, I decided, fuck it, I'm going to do this. We're going to sell. And, and uh, so we, after 25 years, we built, the, Julie and I built the house and, the, uh, and we've got their memories in the house with the kids growing up and their friends and all that kind of thing. And, and we, anyway, we, we sold the house. 
And um, yeah, and that, and that was, and I remember, I remember um, the last day, like when we'd moved out and, um, and we were just moving around the corner, renting just around the corner. And, and, and um, I think earlier on, I had trouble accepting what we were leaving. And that's why it had trouble selling because it was a time where it was, the market was at a good time, but the price level they wanted, uh, it, you know, it was passed in and it was like I hadn't accepted that I was ready to move. You know, that was that last thing, you know. And I remember the day that um, I was, we were, we had everything moved out and then we, the, 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 um, the new owners were coming, we were going to give them the keys. But I, that morning I went through every room and I could hear my, I could hear my daughters like talking to their friends when they're little, you know, and playing in each room and I let go. And it was just so, you know? Yeah. And then, and then what happened just a couple of weeks before we were settling, this block of land came available, mate, up in, in Hepburn Springs. And it's like 90 acres and it was huge. We weren't looking at anything that size, but we wanted to move out of Melbourne because I, I needed to build this retreat space and I didn't know what it was. So it came up and, and um, Julie, um, you know, wasn't um, at the, that time because we we just moved, you know, we, we, we've sold our house after 25 years and, and Julie wasn't ready. Men are different, obviously, as well. And I was ready. I said, do I have to do this, mate? You know? And so she's, she's strong. Talk about strong women, mate. She's mm -hmm. been beside me. You know, if we go to war, she'd be beside me throwing rocks, mate, you know? Amazing. And, um, and we found this, this, uh, this plate, um, uh, acreage and she wasn't, um, I said she wasn't keen on it because it was all too much happening, unsettling, you know? Anyway, I gave her an out clause and said, if you don't, you know, in two years, if you don't, before we build the house, if you don't like it, um, we'll, you know, we won't, we'll get rid of it. Anyway, it's, so if it's been, that was hard for those years because I couldn't, when we bought it, Julie, I couldn't talk to Julie about the block because she was just too much anxiety there for her. And which is, it's all that. Understandable. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, upheaval and stuff. And, and so it was a bit of a journey. I'd come up here I was, I was, I was, and I was still running MCON building company. Um, and then I just decided, my good mate of mine said, Mark, you need to, it's, and run the building company, there's too much in your head going on. Just do pull that back a bit. So I said to Paul, I'm going to leave now. And I left MCON and just focused on doing smaller jobs, just small, even just plumbing, small stuff. And, and obviously we, we retreats uh, or, or breathing sessions and, and um, touring around Australia in a caravan called with the Chill Seekers. So we toured around, right up the east coast of Australia and we finished up in, in, um, the Northern Territory, ice bars on the way, you know, little caravan. We slept this little caravan, me and my mate Zane. Um, yeah, but, we, but sorry, I've got, might have gone off track a bit there, but, but basically there was this thing about me wanting to build this retreat space. So anyway, now we're in it. We're, we're, we're up here and it's happening. And how big's the property? It's the yeah, 90 acres. Whoa. And we're Plenty off of retreat space there. Yeah, yeah, it's right, mate. Off grid, um, which is which is uh, great, and that's that was being hard for living in the middle of the city and having all these beautiful comforts. And now we're in nature. Um, we've got yeah, we're, we're on a solar. We've got a composting toilet working, um, and it's still all uh, you know you know working away. It's uh, it's been hard, but I love just being out out in nature and um, it's beautiful. Do you feel on purpose? Yes. Completely? Yeah, I do. I, no, I feel, yes, I do. And it's, I feel <clears throat> it's exciting, but also there are times when I think, what am I, I, I'd walk out, what am I doing? Like there's this, there's always a quest. See, there's always this thing about self-doubt in us. Is that fear? Yes. It's fear, mate. It, it's fear. And, and, and fear, like fear is it like a good thing. We need fear. Like it's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, we need to stand and, you know, and look at it and say, okay, yeah, okay. I am fearful here, and that's okay. But let's see what it feels like to just push a little bit, and um, you know, and push, and make your circle, your comfort circle, 
larger because you you know you put your toe in and just give it a go. So that's no. why they call you the fear hunter, hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see, the thing is, and people in life, when they're, you know, it's like the doors keep coming open. There's, there are always doorways. You either step in them or you don't. And the fear can hold you back from opening that door and having a look. But when the door opens, mate, you put your foot in and your knee and then you push it in and you lean in and you see where it goes. You know what uh, I remember you saying when, when you spoke that day at that event that I saw you at for the first time. It, <laughs> and I walk around the house saying it to myself sometimes when I, I feel I need a push. You're like, fuck fear. That's fuck it, mate. It. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's there. See, it's there. It's fine. Okay. But look at it, stand it and look it in the face and say, yep, I'm going to give this a go. And there's, there's, there's all this kind of, Feeling, yeah, so that's why the, and, and that's why the ice, ice bar's so good, mate, because, see, the ice bar's a metaphor for life, mate, you know? Life's an ice bar. And, and if you can get in an ice bar, which it's times I still, I've got the freezer there, I think, do I have to jump in? And when you get in, that there's the contentment that comes through you that, and if you're going to have something that comes up during the day, You've been able to sit in an ice bath, right? And then, and then it becomes, and then you get a comparison. Well, if I can do that, especially for young ones, if I've done that, the person give me a hard time at, at school or, or, or you know, uni or becomes nothing. These things become nothing because there's a yardstick there, mate, and it's a yardstick for life. You know, it's pushing through that barrier of pain, isn't it? It's yeah, no, it is. It's pushing. It's pushing through the barrier, you know, and. And, um, and, and you know that, look, you know that not test yourself any, and that's fine if you, you know, but will you be happy, mate, at the end? Will you be happy? Like there's a door open and we had these doors open and I look back now and I couldn't, I couldn't ignore the things that were, these stories that, that, um, that have come through that were happening on the way, you know, like this block of land that I, that, or that, that we bought, I found out that it was my good mate, it was a, he, his mate was my next door neighbor. Like all these things out of the blue have, have happened. And you've got to sit back. And if that ever happens to you, you need to sit back. And, re, and before, just before you say, no, I'm not going because you don't want to, because you feel that, I don't know what's going to be around that corner. Sit back and just say, hang on a minute and, and, and weigh it up. Why is this happening? Mm. I've noticed you get emotional throughout this, um, this interview quite a bit. What, what are those emotions right now that you're feeling? Oh, well, it's, I look back because I go back into the feeling of, of what it was like. I can go back and think, that's what it really felt like. And then it's so, so you, you, I'm revisiting, mate. Mm. I'm revisiting that, that feeling that I had inside, mate. That when, I had inside, you know? When, when you decided it was time to pull back from that construction company that you built. Yeah. Were you, were you afraid? Were you uncertain whether that was going to be the right choice? Because there's yeah. so many people who are probably sitting in that position right now and they're 20, 30 years deep into an industry and know nothing else but have no passion left for it. And I really want to really ignite something, people who are listening, who perhaps are in that frame of mind to hear something in you and, and know that they can do it too. It's going to be okay. Yes. And I think you have to believe in yourself, mate. There's if if there's no fire there, the fire's gone out, mate. You've got to relight it. And you need to just have a look on what's making you happy. On The main thing is you be yourself. Don't – I think you've got to sit there. If, you start, if you're starting to feel like this, uh, meditation is really important, of course, but you need to – you need to be able to sit there and just work out what's making you truly happy. What is it that makes you is it is it – is it making you happy that you've got to compare yourself to what success is? What is success? Is it having all these things? I feel 
success is in, in here and what you feel inside. And if you're truly happy inside, that is true success. That is true success. Because it's not about the fucking Porsche, mate. It's what you feel in here. And so that's what I would say. I would people to take a time out. And it's not going to happen. It mightn't happen straight away. They start thinking about it. Like start and going into, going into nature, into a quiet space and, and just feel, it's a, it's a, it's a hard Maritza because it just come like, because I'm one to just act from my heart. And I think that's one thing that's important. I'm going to go back now to that quick, because this is the answer is right, is you get out of the head and into the heart. There's too much time in here. There is far too much. Oh, no, no, we need, the, we need this incoherence, though. What does your heart say? What truly do you want to do inside? What does the heart say, mate? And then if you've been ahead, always in the head, give this, because that'll be hard. Just go from there and do and little steps, you know? As I said, that, that time was a door open for me and it was like, I could have easily not gone because I, I was uncomfortable about it, you know, as you know, and I stepped through the door and I think that there's going to be times if people are ready and they're thinking about this, step through the door, mate. How, yeah. um, how important do you think it is to have supportive people and the right people around you to oh, take huge, it huge. Cause see, I've been studying also, and that's what I want to bring into uh, our space here is um, is the rite of passage, you know, which I, I, I studied at the Rite of Passage Institute, and um, that's a really important part of. I think that's a, that I've gone through a rite of passage, you know, with with what we've done here, and I always believed uh, a rite of passage was only like when. Um, when the, the young one, like whether male or female, go from manhood, uh, sorry, from, from childhood to manhood or, or girlhood to, to womanhood, is that right? Yeah. And I, I that, but it go, it's all through our life. It's all through our life. And see, we've got this uh, a social structure like a staircase. And there are times when we, we need to move up the stair and we're not because we're stuck. We're stuck there. And what it does, it creates a problem below in the community for other ones to move through. And, um, and, I, and I feel that um, the rites of passage is, is something I went through again through my life, okay? And that's really important. I mean, we, that's, an, that's another big thing to, to talk about, you know, but... Um, There, when you are uncomfortable, uh, there's a time, on, on, you know, through our life that you get caught. That's where the agi there's agitation there, and the, and that's when they, you know, people can lose it and they just nonplussed about everything, you know. And and, and what I've learned, but by, by as said by that rite of passage, is that you need to work through that and go to the next stage. It's like it's, it's the same as opening the door, you know, and seeing what and seeing what's there, and and and. Um, and it's facilitated in a safe space and um, it's so important. And there you'll find the right people to surround yourself with. Exactly, the right community. Exactly. So I probably didn't even answer your question there. I went on a tangent as usual, but mm. that's what it's about. It's, it's about surrounding yourself with like-minded people. And the reason I brought that up is because I've learned is that I went through a rite of passage on that retreat and it was really important that when I came back, I had my community was fifth element wellness, you know, and that community supported me through that rite of passage, right? They supported me through that rite of passage and, um, and that's what, what, what needs to happen. And if it doesn't happen, and I didn't even know this was going on, mind you, I only worked this out, Later on, when I when I went after I studied at this institute, 
is that what that's what, what, what the process was. And it just ha- it happened. And so getting with the right people, you know, um, because when you go through a change, you've got to make sure you're with the right people because that, like my, bro- my brother said earlier also, is that they can steal your power and they keep hitting you bang, 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 and then you, get, you, you go back into that state and it can be worse because you haven't moved through, yeah? Like if you truly want something, you have to believe in yourself that that's what you deserve and go for it. For people who are listening today and and want to, who have really resonated with you, it doesn't have to be men, it can be women as well. I mean, I know you're working towards getting this retreat space open and ready once these um, restrictions are lifted and, and life resumes as normal, but you are very, you're a very relatable person and um, are different to a lot of other people in this space. Can they connect with you directly? Can they, can you be their support person? Yes. Well, we all can. We, yeah. I'd like, yeah. I mean, that's what we're trying. We're trying to build that. It's that community. Maritza, mm-hmm. So we can be there for each other. But, and that's what excites me because the exciting part is true connection with us all. That, that's what excites me. Deep connection. Yes, mate. Bloody oath. Um, and so, I don't want to talk about the weather anymore. No. <laughs> no there, there, there's no such thing as good or bad weather. It's, it. it's all good, mate. It's, it's all nice. good. You said that as soon as we got on. You said, we need the rain. This is great. Yeah, bloody oath. So um, Amazing. We're, we're going to, um, up, it's up at Elevated Springs here, we're going to um, run some day sessions for people. And obviously, there'll be a sat. There'll be Saturday and a Sunday, and um, then we'll be doing, doing some corporate stuff. But but at the moment, we're starting up again. That's why I want people here to eat. Listen, listen to this one, catch right. Eat, breathe, connect. You know, when we first jumped on this uh, call, Mark, you did say uh, you had fallen into some old habits over this time. Yes. And I just want to take this opportunity to, for you to use this interview as a reminder to, to jump back into all the shit that you've just been talking about and, and do the stuff that lights you up because you've given me so much in this interview. If that's one thing that I can remind you of as we leave ways and part oh. ways today, go back into it. You're going to make me cry now too. <laughs> you always make me cry. <laughs> Jump back into it. Oh no, and and <laughs> because the question is, and I suppose because the and it's and look, this is the thing: the isolation stuff. It's hard for everyone. Like we're all going to, and we all. That's what we need to do. We need to get together. Don't listen to the news. We don't need all that. That's all, you know, really, it's a scare, the fear. See, they're plugging into our fear. We fuck fear when we get to, yeah, exactly. And we've got to get together. And that's what's so important because we are community. That's what we're, we're community beings. We're not together in isolation. So, we're, so we need to keep together with each other and, um, and support one another and we'll get through this. I'm Maritza Barone. Thank you for listening to the Things You Can't Unhear podcast. I'd love to keep the conversation going. Let us know what you thought of this episode and if something really profound came up for you that you want to share, let's talk about it. You can find me on Instagram at Things You Can't Unhear or on my personal page at Maritza underscore Barone. And if someone you know will benefit from something that was said in this show, make sure you share it with them too. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and keep up to date with what's next. And if you can spare a few seconds, please rate and review the show on iTunes just so other people can find us more easily and quickly. And as always, my friends, be happy, be healthy, be conscious and be kind.